Hello everyone, today we are trying something new and exciting. We are going to combine one of my favorite acrylic pouring techniques, straw blow, with some easy and awesome mixed media techniques to create a unique textured poppy piece that anyone can try. This is going to be a very easy painting, but a two-parter. So part one, this is my silicone mat. The colors for today are as follows. We've got alizarin crimson, scarlet red by Arteza. We've got my own red mix and orange by Cassart. Oh, one more, Mars black, Mars black. No, no, sorry, two more, Mars black and gold by Arteza. So this is the consistency of the paint. It runs off the stick really smoothly. Can you see? Uninterrupted stream and a very small buildup. So what's in it? One part of paint to one part of pouring medium, which in my case is 50% of water, 50% of PVA glue, and then one part of flood chalk. And if it's not runny enough, I add a bit of water, I just spray in some water. As I usually say, I don't measure anything, so it's, it's approximate. Now the fun part. Drizzling the paint. <clears throat> Maybe not necessarily like this. I can just make one blob and some more here. So these will be the darker petals. Crimson red on top. Don't even know what color this is. As I said, I mixed it myself. And now a little bit of gold. And some black. Shall we try the big chunky straw? my old veteran over year old I might go with this one so now I'm just blowing some petals I love how the colors mix don't try to make it perfect it looks better when they are slightly uneven oh I'm loving the big ones look at that that's awesome very happy with this one there was one drop of silicone in the gold I can see now I must have added it previously. You can always add more, especially if you want to change the color scheme a bit. Lighten up a section. I had some people asking me, what do I do with the dripping water? I actually don't have dripping water. I'm trying to not have any saliva. I just try not to spit into this straw, if, if that's possible. Now I definitely need a couple of smaller ones in a different direction. So I'm just going to blow in one side. You'll see in a minute. Perhaps one more completely closed up. One like this. I'm not going to even blow on this one, you know. I can hardly believe it, but it's the next day and they are completely dry. Let's just peel them off now. Ah, oh, they come so easy. That's super easy. That's too easy. They just basically come off straight away. No fight. Is it the mat or or have I made them a bit thicker? Oh, that's... <laughs> Sorry, I'm slightly disappointed because I just love... No, they are not actually that thick. They are not thick. It must be my new mat. This site is a bit more matte. The mat is matte here <laughs> and more glossy on this side. So perhaps that's the answer. And I've got some ambitious plans for the background. I've been thinking of, I just want to do something, something different when I teach my students. I mean, we, we do all kinds of things, not just anything to do with pouring. So I am actually itching to do something different with the background and perhaps teach you 
one or two simple but very effective techniques. This is my new canvas. It's actually a premium canvas by Yoteza. It's approximately 28 centimeters by 36. Um, it's got a really nice feel to it and a thicker grain, if you can see. It's well, very taut. All right, so composition. I actually have probably too many flowers. I think I'm not going to use all of them. So I'm going to keep those two for later. I'm just wondering, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll use that one. I shuffled these because this one is actually going to be growing down as it's a poppy bud and poppy buds go up. So it's going to be hanging down. I love poppies. And you probably noticed because this will be like the third poppy painting, but at least I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying my best to do it, each one very different. I'm just sketching them because I want them in the exact position. As I said, the background is going to be different. I want to know where they are because I'm going to plan my textured background. I'll tell you why. I always love mixed media. But my latest project with my students, we were doing various types of printing and self-portraits. And I think they look awesome and different textures. In the relief printing and mono printing, I just loved some of the backgrounds. But I'm not going to be mono printing here. But I just, I just wanted to see some more texture this week. And as I always say, this channel is more about experimenting, trying different media, different things, and hopefully inviting you to try something you haven't used before, you haven't tried before. Now, you can create texture background with various media, modeling paste, various types of gesso, but I know that not everybody will have access to maybe art shops or just want to use something, something homemade, you know, on a budget as well. So I've got this super cheap, super cheap all-purpose filler. I actually used on my wall as well, cover the crack, but I've noticed that this one, some of them are a bit harder, but this one is quite soft. And I'm sure we can replace gesso just using that. I'm just hopefully it won't crack all over. If I don't try, I will never know. I am slightly apprehensive, but I think it looks promising. Ooh. That's awesome. And I don't want it perfect. Um, I can see I'm covering most of my flowers. It's a good job I've taken a picture. I think I'm going to have it smooth where the flowers are and then quite rough all around. Oh, I am so excited because it looks, it looks so good. And it's like creamy. Now I'm thinking, I'm going to press some textures into it. Do I need to wait a bit or shall I press it straight away? I'll try a small section. This one needs different marks. Let's see if it works. This was a section from my student's print. It was wallpaper. I'm going to try it here in this corner. I just want an imprint. It's not that I want it red. But if it stays red, Oh, okay. I think we're going to wait a bit for it to dry. Can you see it just peeled it off? That's all right. So I am scraping it off. And I'll try something else. There's another option. We can wait for it to dry completely and then print on top. But I'm still curious whether it will work when it's kind of slightly wet. When I was working for it to get dry, I actually found some very intriguing materials. I don't even know what it is. How do you call it? I think they will look awesome if we're going to stick it here. And I don't have to peel it off. It can stay. How about that? So that should give us some really interesting texture here in the corner. I'm still remembering where the flowers are, so I don't want to cover my flowers. So yeah, let's just stick it down. That will definitely create some very, very interesting effect. How about just adding bits in other places? 
Well, some of you may think, oh, I don't have this special textured media, but you can use anything, ripped paper, cut out, you can attach some string, wrap it up, tissue paper, you can layer tissue paper, you can scrunch up tissue paper, soak it in glue. You can find pieces of fabric, rip them, stick them down. So that could be anything. I mean, sky is the limit to what you can use for the background and then just paint over it and create your lovely texture. Another fabulous find. That will give us some nice texture later on. Oh, wow, I love this one. Okay, I've got some more. Our background is completely dry. No cracks, really smooth. So actually this paste is perfect. And I love those 3D effects. I'm going to use some white paint now and I'll go over those sections that were grey. I think they were grey. Just dubbing a little bit of white acrylic. And now I'm thinking what colours do we want? I'm trying to create some off-white colour. I don't... I've decided I don't want any deep colours here at the moment. So I've got my titanium white, then I've got a new colour portrait Portrait pink. Maybe mixing a bit of this. It's very similar to champagne that I have. It's slightly different. This is more skin tone. This is brighter. Grabbing my big brush. There is some difference to just a bit. I need to be braver at some point. Do something more dramatic. I found these. These are alcohol inks. I just wonder what will happen if I spray a bit of alcohol ink. I haven't tried it on canvas yet. This is brown. I hope I'm not going to regret it. So this is quite, oh, this is quite deep. So what if I just add a couple of drops and some water? Hmm? Would that be enough? Let's just start with a little bit. I can always add more. See if I like it. And let's see if it stains anything. Oh, Remember, we can always wipe it if it doesn't look appealing. I'm quite happy with the spray going onto this texture. Now, once I've noticed what it looks like, I might put some more. I might actually mix an acrylic paint and use the spray instead of alcohol ink. I dropped a blob of Artessa's Gold, sprayed some water in it. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but why not? It should, unless it's going to be too thick and will clog my spray a bit more. I hope you can see something happening there. I was very tempted and I put a drop of black here with brown. I might even use a small brush and just try to go in between, just, whoops, just a little bit. I might use my finger and just touch some of those bits to make them pop. Now I'm thinking, wouldn't it be nice if the poppies had stems out of the string? I think that would be nice. Let's see if I have the appropriate string. I did find some string and it looks all right. So I'm going to put the poppies where they should be and then I'll glue the string down. Cut my string, this is my glue. I want plenty of glue but not really drippings. Trying to stick small sections here. Just one useful tip. When you are closing your glue, when you're putting the lid on, it's quite important to make sure that this is completely clean because so many times I screwed it down and it was glued. Now I do have, what, tiny two drops of this left. So I am thinking 
that I might use that brush that I used before and just add a bit of a shadow next to the stems to create a bit of contrast. And if it gets into the string, that's fine with me. Do some splatters with gold. So we've got some bigger splashes and now some smaller ones. Some splatter, that's what I wanted. What do you think? I do like the splashes. Okay, so see you tomorrow. One more quick experiment. I'm just wondering what if one or two flowers was actually higher? See if I can make just a layer like this, get it dry and then attach one of the blossoms to it. I just wish I could create some height. Let's test it. Yeah, I think that's it. So well, I might do a second one. I position my flower. It's still kind of wet, but not really sticky anymore. I'm drawing it around because I want to cut it out. Didn't get stuck. So now I can cut it out. I want to cut it out before it gets... It's completely set. It's so easy to cut it out because it's like partially hardened, but not really hard. You know, usually, as I, as I mentioned before, I'm kind of influenced by what I do during the day with my students. And today we're making clay burgers, first time ever, cutting out, you know, all the ingredients. That was so much fun. It's actually my group of a lovely group of special needs uh, young adults. So once it's all done, I might show you actually what they made. Okay, that's boring. So let's just skip that part and I'll have the flower cut out. My stems are solid dry. I am adding more black. I don't know, I do like the colours, but the poppies are very vibrant and I'm, I want more contrast. So this time I sprayed some alcohol inside. I want to see if there'll be any difference. So let's just try here. Okay, it's getting darker now. Remember, we can always wipe it off. I do want some darker corners. That's what I want. Let me test the flowers again. Final touches with white. I've decided I actually wanted white on top, so I am just retouching it with my finger, just like that. I found this while searching through my <laughs> old supplies. Acrylic ink. Acrylic ink in crimson. That looks really nice. So final splashes just around the flowers. So this is the little flower I formed from the filler, completely dry. Since I made them, I might as well try. I think it's going to look more interesting, but this is of course optional. No, no you don't have to do it. Trying out and seeing if I'd like it. But I think I am going to like it. Since this is, the background is 3D, 3D flower would be a nice, nice little embellishment. But I'm not doing all of them, I'm just doing two. Also, I'm not painting the edges, I am only painting this side. I realized that before I stick the big one, I have to stick the one that was underneath because they were slightly overlapping. So I am quickly putting some paint and you know that I love using paint as my glue. I always say that because this is acrylic, the background is acrylic, acrylic will bind it really well. And now how was it? Didn't make any mess, which is good news. I'm sticking this one as well. Now my 3D element. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> it's going to spice it up a bit. And then I'm sticking it down, making it nice and even. Now this is absolutely my final, final moment. 
I'm adding a little bit of a shadow around some petals on one side. As you can see, this is a tiny amount. And again, this is just me. You don't have to do all that. Well, there we are. I always love combining pouring with different techniques to take it further, push the boundaries and teach you new skills. I really hope you liked this piece and I would love to hear what you thought in the comments. Be sure to go to abcreativeofficial.com to check out more info and see what pieces I have for sale. I'm here every Saturday for the live premiere of my latest video, so consider subscribing if you haven't. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.